Hey everybody, welcome back to the Morpho Project. And so today we are going to be starting with our lovely drawing of, uh, well, you know, the background. That's uh, what we're going to be doing today, at least. I hope everybody's going to be enjoying this, and uh, let's get started. Ah. So, to get this thing all up and running, first thing I need to do is actually make me a second one of these. Yep. Five is good enough, right? Let's see. Yes, it is. Awesome. So, let's get started on this. So the main idea here is that we're actually going to be going for, you know, our lovely little drawing here. So I need to make sure that I have... God dang it. Why do I always draw on the wrong side? So yeah, today we're going to be working on the part that we need to do, which of course is, you know, our lovely little... There you go. Oh, hey, Blue. Nice to see you. Yeah, the, the main problem here is that I actually need to make a draw a background, which means that, you know, drawing a background causes a lot of trouble in the drawing itself, because indeed it is very difficult to draw. So we should first make ourselves some nice little place that we need to do. Like, for instance, we sketched already a little bit. Now we're gonna per now we're gonna refine the sketch and then you know draw it again and then we're finally gonna be filling it up. So this should work. Yep. And then we should also have like right up here. Cool. So I'm gonna be picking it right here and then I'm gonna be doing it like that. Lovely. All right. Now, since that we are done, since we're done doing that, we're now gonna make sure that we have everything under control. So, now that we drew the main thing that we wanna draw, which is the roots, of course, we are trying to focus on the roots. We're gonna be making another draw on this. So we're gonna put this into a group. And then put that on top of it. Now we're going to add some more stuff to it. I need to do something here for this. Yep. Not like that. Like this. Thank you.
There you go. Easy. So now that we have created this route right here, we then actually can implement that into the more of the crystal, which we need to do. Oh hey Cryak! As the sea was well. So now that we have implemented the route, we also need to implement the route again. About here. And today we're going to be, you know, adding some more stuff to it. So we're not going to be doing the coloring or, you know, we're going to be just doing the drawing part. Because, you know, backgrounds are really hard to do. Therefore, you know, we need to make sure that we're doing it correctly. All right. This is so lovely. Nice. So now we have now we have created roots. That is indeed an important part of this thing. Since that we now have created the roots that are need to be there, we now need to get some uh, more uh, parts in it. Like since that we know that it's already roots, we could also assume that right here over here is going to be a root as well. It connects the top part of the crystal with the bottom part of the crystal, which is going to be like that. Um, since we now have the full control over it, we can now look at this on a bigger picture. So we're going to do that as well. We're going to close down the color. We're going to close down the... We're going to close down this one as well. Uh, no this one yes awesome so now we can see like oh well because we have these lovely little well not tentacles but these lo lovely little roots we can now assume that you know since that we are drawing the roots on top of each other we now know how to do this You can already see that it's going to get shaped. So, since that we want to have shapes on it, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to extend on the texture right now because if we do that now, it's probably going to be problem. So, how my Freddy actually has been? Well, uh, I woke up with a, I woke up with a headache. I still have a headache. That's why I did not do the. Uh, that's why I did not do the. Uh, uh, morning drawing but uh, it's pretty good I hope you guys like my Larry Larry joke on April Fools which was also a very fun thing to do so now that we have expressed that ourselves with the true rooting part right yeah we, we did it now correctly now I can do this put that on 55 55 again now I can do this All right. We now we now have you know find out what we need to draw. So we're gonna draw it like that. And I'm gonna take my sweet ass time to draw this. Trust me. It'll be worth it. So these are like the big roots, so we should also go for like a, a, a sort, well, 
not a snake form, but at least, you know, a good old fashioned line that does not include anything like that. So we have strong roots, we have little roots, big roots. So we could go for that. Alright. Nice. So now I believe we also need to add this part right here. We're just gonna take our sweet ass time to create this. Trust me. It will be worth it. We just take our time. Right. Won't be able to chat much. Still got to work. <laughs> Still at work. Got uh, two and a half hours left. I don't have any extra oil though. Oh, well, you know, work is always good. I wish I would be able to work properly. That would have been lovely. So now that we've done that, we're now going to be and getting the beautiful texturing done. So yeah, uh, let's see, it is, um, it is already 12 minutes in, so yeah, I can do this. Hmm. It's quite funny to see how much stuff actually gets done. Uh, yes, I'm trying to get the root texture done on this, so that's why it looks like that's why I'm making holes in it. Well, they're not holes technically, but you get the point here. So the idea here is that we are drawing these roots and then you know extend those roots into the better parts. All right. So yeah, this is gonna be taking a while to get this thing done, but it's some good old it's some good old fashioned texture that I think eh, it is suitable for trees and roots. 
So what you actually do is you draw little gaps and then sometimes you draw lines into it. You don't have to per uh, you don't have to per se uh, intertwine the lines like you know like this. That is not that's not needed. All right. Back to five. Because we need to add some lines here. There we go. Let me guess. I'm using the. Oh no! I'm using the wrong. No! God dang it! Why is it always me that this happens when I do things my way? Oh. Yes. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I freaking knew it, knew it, knew it, knew it, knew it, knew it. All the time when things like that happen, because now I'm using two styles, is not, it is not possible. We need not to use two styles. We cannot use two styles. If we do that, it will be horrible. <sighs> God damn it, God damn it. Wait. I'm just going to be copying it with less. Great. Sorry guys, I made a mistake. The mistake is very easy noticeable if you if you didn't notice. All right, back to the drawing board. This time I'm drawing it with the right with the with the correct amount. This wasn't. If this wasn't there, uh, would not have done this. Mistakes are easy overlooked, especially when you're a little bit tired. Sometimes, ugh. Let's keep no, let's keep on going here. It's, it's a real shame that sometimes like these uh, these things can happen. Do right? you make a tiny little mistake and you need to wait for like a long time to realize it? It's like ah well, that mistake is not good. Now of course you know, <sighs> luckily I was able to reverse the mistake. Before anything could happen. Now that's done and settled. Uh, 
that's more clear. I love you. All right, now I can do this. The main issue is if I had not done this, the whole art style would have been ruined. What the? All right. Why is this too high? It's because I did not put five on right. Yep, didn't put five on. And just like that you get that oody feeling. Awesome. I mean, it, the whole damn thing here is just, you know, me concentrating on getting these routes correctly done, so yeah. I'm tired too, was going to tr going to try to work for 10 hours today, but uh, I don't think I will be able to stay awake for that long. Yeah, it really sucks sometimes when you want to try to stay awake and you're like, I want to sleep, give me my nap nap time. But alright. I'm happy enough to say, and uh, I'm happy enough to say that I actually did uh, the April Fool's joke correctly. You know, after all, you need to have always a day to celebrate Larry Day, International Larry Day, because Larry is awesome and cool. No. Easy.
Does that look like roots? Yeah, it looks like a fucking root. Lovely. That looks like some decent rooting. Like decent roots. Yeah. Good. Larry is the best Larry. Indeed. Larry 21. 20, 2021. Yes. Larry best Larry. Organization strikes again. Saving millions on uh, toilet paper. Ah, there's nothing better than just, you know, drawing roots, yep, tree roots, of all the things that you can draw, it's tree roots, what a surprise, yeah, what a surprise indeed, tree roots are the best, I mean, you know, it's just casual roots, but according to me, they are the best, and, uh, well, you know, I have terrible knowledge recall uh, recalling. Like, today I actually started uh, Universalis again, so Universalis 4, and uh, with some friends of mine, and uh, I, uh, they st all started in the big giant European lands, and I was, ele I was electric, bungos, yes, indeed. I went to Africa to uh, spread the word of, what was it again? Uh, something very stupid, uh, I had... I had like a religion that was nowhere to be found anywhere. I was I was a horde faction, so I had to burn everybody down. I had to burn everything down to the ground to gain loyal subjects. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm working towards uh, you know raiding and pillaging everything that there is in the world. And somehow in uh, in the African co in the African African co uh, in the African co uh, countries, everybody's like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and my army is like very strong and very powerful. So every single fight, I will just win by default. It's like, "March, my armies, march, march!" And you know, conquering everything. But I need to be very safe playing it. So I'm like, "Hmm, I need to gather up this part of a land, convert it to my religion." No, wait. Force them to worship my religion, and also claim their land, and then I will proceed to the next part. And if the, and if the development is too low, I will burn it all down to the ground. Yes, excellent choices. The worst thing is it actually doesn't help a lot because you know you burn so much stuff that you actually, if you go below the threshold of fifty of fifty percent, you're actually having you're getting a debuff. That is really not helpful well you know your whole lead, your whole your whole damn system is actually collapsing let's put it that way so uh with my amazing army of pure brutes i uh i already have conquered six whole provinces six yes in africa just by you know being there being that person who is like hey you got land do you mind if i take it of course, I will not with force. I will just first rightfully claim it as mine, and then I will make sure that it is into my and then I will add it to my collection by forcing it its religion, so that I don't have to use my mercenaries to be like, woolaloo, woolaloo, for almost five years before it's done, because damn, those things are expensive. It's like you know you have like a steady income of one whole coin, and then you need to spend it all on a mercen uh, on a missionary. It's like. No, thank you. Also, I need to change their culture because, of course, I c I went with the Sparta culture, you know. <laughs> no, Larry did not do that. I did it. I did it. All right. 
I saw I started the game and uh, I wanted to play I wanted to play in the African co in the African country to see how far behind I will get in technology. <laughs> Apparently a lot. But it didn't matter at all because you know I am ruffle stumping them into the ground and until you know the Europeans will come and they will totally beat my beat my sh Yeah, they will beat me. They will beat me silly. Larry's a good game. He has nothing on. Oh yes, you and the tyrant. Yes, I know. It's sad news already. I am totally evil. Yes, somehow I'm evil, but I'm a very nice person. I I I give people jobs, and then you know, the next thing, somebody's house turns into a fire pit. I don't know why, because I was forced to. <laughs> I was forced. All right, I had to do it. Otherwise, people. Otherwise, the people of my country would hate me for not being a tyrant. <laughs> so yeah. Um, next time I will remember I will not play a horde faction because it is not worth it at all. <laughs> it's not worth to burn and pillage people. It is not worth. It is not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. It's so bad. And eventually, you know, you don't have any land to s sit on, so it's uh, it's bad. You could technically go for, you know, pick some pots and then, you know, put that into your part where you want to burn and pillage, but I don't know, maybe I will do that as well. But I don't think I can do that. I need, like, at least five places where I can just be like, I want to burn that to the ground. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. So you're gonna be burning you, you, and you, and then you know, and then you you have a steady income. Otherwise, you won't be. Sounds like you took. Uh, l sounds like when I took Istanbul from uh from my friends, civilization in Civilization Five, and named it Constantinople once again. <laughs> oh, that never gets old. That never gets old. That never gets old. Well, at least, at least you didn't name your your factions uh, uh, like a silly name, like Electric Bongos. Oh yes, we hold the Electric Bongos once again, not striking our land. <laughs> ah. It didn't help that I made a faction that it was entirely not balanced at all, because apparently, when you have like a high, an army that is so strong and structured. It's really hard to get rid of it. The main downside was that my armies were expensive. The good news was they were really, really strong. So that's the good part. And uh, yeah, I am working on, you know, getting that sweet ass. I'm trying to get, I want to actually try to conquer all of Africa. And then once my friends finally arrive in Africa, I'm like, hey! You're trying to arrive in Africa. Allow me to burn everything to the ground. Good day, sir. You don't get anything out of this. So, every development. So, I'm going to be using a scorch, po a sc a scorch policy. <laughs> and everybody's going to be loving me. And then everybody's going to be loving me for it. Yeah, that sounds up uh, the step of nomads. Yep. That's how a nomad life is. You know, you, you 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 think that it's a prosperity of a city and then you see it all burned down to the ground. It's quite funny that, you know, because of the Scorch Earth, actually nobody is going to get any value out of your country. Which is amazing. Because, yeah, nobody wants to have a 1-1 one, one value part that they cannot even use for anything. But, yeah. Ah, good old fashioned me. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to get making sure that I have everything on the control, but damn, that's hard to do. Sometimes.
So, um... Yeah, um, so I'm gonna be doing that later on, to the, tonight again, you know, working on my great conquest to conquer all of Africa. Uh, there will be only electric bongos playing in the in the background music. No mechanical bongos, no, you know, homemade bongos. No, only electric bongos will be trade on the trading companies. I'm already bullying most of my neighbors because, you know, I have like... You have that army over there standing, waiting to be like, when is the peace? When is the peace conference going to be over? Ah, well, in five years. All right, people, just prepare for five years, and then we're gonna kill them. Of course, I'm not gonna be killing them. I'm not gonna be burning their houses down. I'm just gonna be casually burning their houses down because I need to. Otherwise, my army is gonna be like, hey, let's have a revolution. It's like, no. None of that, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, the uh, the the electric bungos uh, are not very good places to uh, do stuff, especially when uh, yeah, horde factions are not good. <laughs> well, they're great. They're just not great at being keeping themselves alive because you need to destroy your own economy to get your people to be happy. That is like backwards savagery, and uh, well, you know, I don't mind, but I really should have something to say in this. So yeah, um, luckily in two years, or t well, luckily in five or ten years, I can reform my government once again, and then uh, I can uh, adapt a policy that everybody's gonna be loyal to me, so I don't have to burn everything to the ground just to get some fame and happiness into my people so yeah um if you ever if you if if my friends are ever going to be seeing my nation it's like why is all that land over there totally useless well um i found it just like it is why is every house burned to the ground then that is supposed to be burning to the ground that's um a thunderstorm came. Yes. Yes, a thunderstorm came and they destroyed those houses. Definitely. So yeah, um a lot of people are a lot of uh, countries are going to be really mad if I destroy all the progress of all the natives in the area. <laughs> so they're all going to be like, "Why are we fighting this land again? It has nothing. It has has absolutely no value." Great. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing that, and uh, if they want to keep a hold on it, I will build big giant fortresses all across the land, and making sure that everybody's gonna be like, fortresses? Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, I'm gonna making sure that everybody is gonna be surrendering to my power of fortresses, definitely. So yeah, um, it's quite funny that uh, actually one of my friends is actually playing a nation that only builds forts. So he's building a whole he's building a whole wall. All right, he's building only forts in every single province, and then he lets rebels come into his place, and uh, the rebels are uh, and his country is really unstable. So every single time you know an enemy wants to try to go into his land, it's like, well, there are also angry peasants there that want to also fight you. It's like. Tanks, I guess. So yeah, uh, they are currently busy dealing with uh, lots of peasants, angry peasants. Well, I'm just be like, yes, I forcefully converted those people to my religion. There are no angry mobs anymore. Nice. So yeah, uh, I'm just you know casually being that guy who uh, has no problems whatsoever. The only downside is I have problems whatsoever because if I don't do the aggressive expansion of my uh, of my uh, of my of my uh, civilization, uh, probably I'm gonna be in lots of trouble. But hey, you know, in Africa, I think that will be easily done because you know, electric bongos are very faint there. Ah, oh well. 
Let me just take a look at this. Let me just take a look at this. Oh, that looks lovely. I like it. Uh, 40 minutes in. Nice. So as you can see, this already creates the effect of tr uh, of root or tree-like uh, appearance, as you can see, which is the idea of this uh, uh, of this background. So yeah, um, I hope uh, I hope you guys are also enjoying the, the view of this and me talking about electric bongos apparently today. Well, you know. It happens. It happens. It definitely happens. There have been worse situations. Yeah, definitely. Like if you would talk about... Yeah, let's see. If you would talk about a coin, would that be an interesting subject to talk about? You, Of course not, you're gonna be talking about the history of the coin. You're gonna be talking about why is a coin round? In your if you look at a coin, you always think like, "Hey, wait, these coins are round, so it must be a coin." Technically, coins can also be squares, or olives, or whatever. It depends on where you go, and that is very interesting to know because technically, if you, if a normal person would say, "Hey, could you give me that coin for the crane?" and I'm like. Sure, here you go, and I will give a round and a round coin with the value of whatever we have, so that he could put it into the crane, and then he would get a, or she would get a, a teddy bear, win it, you know, grabbing it and then being like, oh well, well done, you got a teddy bear out of it, nice. So yeah, it's quite funny that you know round coins. I would wonder if a machine would work with square coins. If you would have like a, a pinball machine with square coins, that would actually be quite funny. Like, how would you implement that? How would you create a device that would be able to fit square coins instead of round? Because you're always you always know what round coins are, but you never know if it is a square coin. Like back in the day, Coca-Cola actually had a, how do you say, um, Coca-Cola actually had a uh, advertisement. Yes, an advertisement. Uh, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, maybe. Depends. Situational. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a commercial where they actually introduced, you know, you put a coin into the Coca-Cola machine to get a, you know, big giant. Uh, to get your, you know, bottle or no, 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 can of Coca-Cola. Yes. So you put your money in, and then you see the big jar, and then you see like a close-up how the coin goes in, and then you see a fantasy world using the coin to activate all kind of machines to finally get yourself that can of Coca-Cola. That was actually a really, a really, really cool way of representing of like. Hey, did you know that this is going on into your machine? And then you're like, Ah, no wonder it tastes so good. Yes. And it, that was actually quite one of my well, best commercials, actually. It's not not one of the commercials I totally hate. And I really appreciate how they did it. It was very cheerful. It was very nice to see. It was like almost like watching a little short movie. Which, uh, you know, short movies are also... Some of them are really good. I only uh, I saw one of the short movies I saw was the Dry It, and I was like, "What the hell's going on here?" And eventually, you know, I got the story like, "Oh, so that's what's going on." Ah, well, you see, that is indeed a thing. Apparently, you know, the uh, apparently the, it was a story about a Dry It who was escaping from a castle. Where you know uh, the hunting party is trying to find them, and a hero is trying to save this dryad from being captured again. And eventually, you know, they make their final stand, and she hugs him, and uh, sh uh, she turns him into a tree, and she disappears. 
that's the end. And you can see their embrace in the in the aftermatch. So you can see there, you know, being hugged. The mo the monument still stands, but it's a tree, which is quite cool. Nice that nice that you remember that. Uh, nice that you remember that commercial. That was actually a very funny one. I believe they had like flying hippos or something like that. Oh no, flying fluffy balls with big giant tongues that would lick the can of Coca Cola to the right side. It was quite funny to see that all these little things were going on in there. Alright. I think I will call it here today. Probably, yeah. Let's take a look at it anyway, because it's, this is actually quite good. So as you can see, the trees are here quite nice. You can see the tree root effect actually on it. Well, doesn't that sound very sanitary? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, the uh, the roots are actually looking quite nice. I really like the textures on it. So I'm happy upon this arrival of it. And uh, let's switch back to the normal view. Yeah, that looks lovely. That looks like how it, I want to intend to have it. The only downside is I still need to implement some big roots. Of course those big roots are going to be a little bit more difficult to draw than the tiny ones. But uh, we will get to it. I think I will get only tiny roots and then, you know, uh, run through them. Like, you know, you have one root and then you have an overlapping root and then another root underneath it and blah blah blah. So that that's what the uh, kind of approach I'm going to be going for afterwards. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, uh, um, thank you all for watching for today. And I think it, that this is it for today. So... I wish you all a lovely day, and um, oh, oh, I hope I'll see you all next time. Until then, I wish you all a lovely day. Bye.